مشاهدينا اهلا بكم الى هذا اللقاء الخاص مع الجنرال مارتن ديمسي رئيس هيئه الاركان المشتركه للقوات المسلحه الامريكيه الذي يزور ابو ظبي حاليا. جنرال ديمسي مرحبا بك معنا وشكرا على اتاحه هذه الفرصه لسكاي نيوز عربيه لهذا اللقاء. دعني ابدا معك بدايه باهداف زيارتك الى هنا، انت هنا للمشاركه في الحوار العسكري الاستراتيجي المشترك، ما هي اهداف هذا الحوار وكيف يمكن أن يعمل على تعزيز أمن الإمارات ومنطقة الخليج بشكل عام. Well, it's good to be back, uh, Mohamed, and uh, to have a chance to chat with you and uh, some of your viewers on many topics. That chief among them, I think. Uh, the joint military dialogue is an effort to um, better integrate our efforts with uh, the United, United Arab Emirates on several issues: security cooperation integrated air and missile defense, command and control, uh, so that uh, we can both improve our capabilities, uh, become the sum become better than the, the parts, if you will, and also so that we can uh, continue to make it clear to other actors in the region uh, that our partnership is intended to produce greater stability. So you ask how will it produce greater stability? The better we interoperate with each other, the better able we are to share our capabilities, to understand each other and to exercise, I think the uh, more stable the region will become. في هذا الاطار كيف تعتزم الولايات المتحده تلبيه الاحتياجات الامنيه لدول المنطقه لتعزيز الامن هنا؟ Well, you know, I think really the, the answer to that is it's not about the US helping the GCC or the GCC helping uh, the United States of America, it's about a partnership. And uh, we've had a long historic relationship with uh, the United, United Arab Emirates and with uh, many members of the GCC. And to the extent that we can refresh our partnership, refresh our understanding of threats, uh, refresh our capabilities, to the extent that we continue to do that and not take each other for granted, I think we'll be a much stronger uh, both bilaterally and cooperatively. جنرال دمسي هناك انطباع هنا في المنطقة على أن الولايات المتحدة منهكة سياسيا بعد أكثر من عقد من الحروب في العراق وفي أفغانستان الآن انسحاب من العراق وأفغانستان في الفترة القادمة هناك انطباع لدى البعض بأن الولايات المتحدة ستجد نفسها مضطرة في نهاية المطاف إلى أيضا خفض وجودها العسكري في هذه المنطقة ماذا تقول؟ It would be a mistake to come to that conclusion. In fact, it would be a mistake to, to decide that we are politically exhausted or, or weary militarily. I've, I hear that myself, but that, that would be a real mistake to come to that conclusion. Here's why. I mean, I think what you're seeing us uh, do uh, is to take a look at the way, let's take Al-Qaeda as an example. Uh, Al-Qaeda, which was uh, kind of a very centralized organization, it, it based in uh, Afghanistan and, and Western Pakistan, we put pressure, with the help, by the way, of folks like uh, our, our uh, uh, United Arab Emirate partners, we put pressure on Al-Qaeda in its home, but it adapted, and we, in fact, we've been very successful at that, but it adapted, as any uh, thinking enemy will often do, and they have migrated elsewhere, they've decentralized. They've taken advantage of unsettled and ungoverned spaces elsewhere in the Middle East and North Africa. And so when you um, take a look at the way we're approaching that as a long-term problem, I think you're, it'd be better to describe it not as weariness or, or wariness, but rather as a rebalancing of our efforts mm -hmm. to build partners, to enable others, to do certain things ourselves. But that ought to be the last resort to do things ourselves. We, we, for the most part, ought to address these kind of challenges collaboratively with partners. Yes, we are going through a period of retraction in our budget, uh, but it's, it's a matter of history. We, we go through this about every 20 years. And the United States still has the military capability to do many more than one thing at a time. And so it's not a, uh, it's, it'd be a false dichotomy to suggest that we can, we, we will either be in the Pacific or we'll be in the Atlantic or we'll be in the Middle East. I mean, frankly, we have global responsibilities. We have global partnerships. It's actually one of the greatest strengths of the United States is its alliances, is its partnerships. Unlike some others who aspire to become great powers, but they don't have friends. They don't make friends. They don't make partners. They try to go it alone. And, and we, on the other hand, tend to th see our 
strength through our partners. طبعا عند الحديث عن الامن في منطقه الخليج ايران لاعب اساسي في هذه المنطقه كما تعلم جنرال دمسي هناك الان محادثات نوويه تجري بين دول الخمسه زائد واحد وايران هناك مخاوف لدى حلفائكم في هذه المنطقه منطقه الخليج من ان هذه المحادثات والتقارب من ايران ربما يكون على حساب ابن هذه المنطقه ماذا تقول لحلفائكم هنا في هذه المنطقه لطمانتهم فيما يتعلق بهذا الموضوع I personally think uh, solving uh, Iran's nuclear aspirations diplomatically is a far better outcome than if we have to use military force. Now, that said, we maintain a both a credible and capable uh, amount of military force in the region so that if the diplomatic track fails, it's available to uh, my leaders and to uh, whatever allies we would uh, find seeking common purpose. But we've said very clearly, Iran will not acquire a nuclear weapon. Now, if they take the opportunity presented and come to that conclusion diplomatically, I think everyone will be better off. But let me also make mention of the fact that that won't solve the challenges that Iran poses to this region. They exert malign influence in other ways to include surrogates and proxies. Lebanese Hezbollah, the IRGC Quds Force, they are uh, the region's uh, biggest trafficker of weapons. Uh, they're very active in, in a uh, malign way in cyber. So there's plenty of things that uh, cause me concern about Iran, both regionally and globally, that will not be solved, uh, even if the nuclear issue is solved. So I think it's important for the people in the region to understand. We do um, seek a diplomatic solution to Iran's nuclear aspirations. Uh, but Iran's got some other things uh, for which they will be held accountable unless they change their behavior. هل تعتقد أن إيران يمكنها أن تلعب دورا إيجابيا في تعزيز أمن المنطقة أم أنها تشكل عامل عدم استقرار من وجهة نظرك؟ Well, I don't know that I wouldn't say that we believe it or disbelieve it. I think that's uh, that's a path that we would like to leave open to Iran, and and perhaps the negotiations on the nuclear issue will start them down that path. But we're also we're not naive. I mean, w there's a pretty significant distance between where we are today with Iran and where we might like to be. But Iran's got a, a rich history. It's got, you know, it's got culture. It's got uh, education. Um, we certainly would hope that Iran would take advantage of those things, do what's right for their people in the region, and stop its malign activities. General Dempsey, بينما نجري هذه المقابلة معك هناك تمارين ومناورات تجرى حاليا في الأردن. تحت عنوان عمليات الأسد المتأهب البعض يربط بين هذه التمارين اللي هي تمارين سنوية وتجرى الآن للسنة الرابعة ولكن البعض يربط بين هذه المناورات وما يجري في سوريا المجاورة هل هناك علاقة لهذه التمارين والمناورات بما يجري اليوم ميدانيا في سوريا؟ Well, no, not exactly. Um, Any time that I um, sign up my forces for an exercise, it's, we sign up for two principal reasons. One is to demonstrate um, a, our partnership with a particular ally or group of allies. So in this case, it's roughly 12,000 or so um, servicemen and women uh, and, an, and an alliance of 20 countries participating. Um, but the second thing is we've, it's actually got to, it's got to make us better. It's got to make us better individually, and that is to say the forces that I deploy. I, I want them to come out of the experience better prepared, better trained. Uh, and I want it to allow us to come out of the experience better able to operate with partners. To that extent, it should be seen as uh, us continuing to try to improve our capabilities in this region of the world. But it's not aimed at any particular issue in Syria. Although we continue to, to be very alarmed about the path on which Assad is taking his country. Um, but the exercise itself is not aimed at Syria, though the capabilities that we hope to develop will certainly be available for any contingency when they're needed. Well, the chemical weapons are actually, uh, you know, there is a, a path, a defined path. The, the Syrian government is generally on that path with a few uh, exceptions. And um, my, my charter from my elected officials is to maintain uh, the credible threat of force should they stray from that path. And we're prepared to do that if, uh, if Assad doesn't continue to remove the chemicals uh, according to the agreement he made.
بعد تمارين العام الماضي تمارين الأسد المتأهب التي جرت العام الماضي الولايات المتحدة تركت في الأردن منظومة عتاد تشمل طائرات F-16 صواريخ باتريت وحتى بعض الجنود هل تعتزمون هذا العام ترك أيضا عتاد وربما جنود في الأردن هل, هل تم طلب هذا الشيء من حكومة الأردن؟ Yeah, that's right. Last year we did. Last year uh, the situation was a little different. We don't anticipate leaving anything behind this year, but I always have that option with the consent of the Jordanian government. But at this point, while I'm having this interview with you, there's no plans to leave any of those assets. No, no requests from No, from not at this time. الحرب في سوريا جنرال دمسي تدخل عامها او دخلت تجاوزت عامها الثالث. هناك 160 ألف قتيل أو أكثر هناك ملايين النازحين والمشردين البعض يقول أن قوات الأسد تحقق تقدم ميداني كبير على حساب المعارضة هل اليوم نستطيع أن نقول أن الولايات المتحدة وحلفائها خسروا الحرب في سوريا؟ You know, the people that are losing are actually the Syrian people and it's, it's just a terrible tragedy but As you know, uh, the path that we're currently following is a path that allows us to do several things. One is we're trying to see the Syrian issue regionally. It's not an issue unique to Syria. I mean, the same influences that are causing Syria uh, and the Syrian people such suffering also exist in Western Iraq and exist in Lebanon. So it's very much a crisis that extends from Beirut to Damascus to Baghdad. And we're trying to work with regional partners, uh, both to strengthen their capabilities uh, on, on the one hand, and also to, to build a political and diplomatic consensus to, to continue to pressure the regime toward um, the Geneva path that would allow this to be, to be resolved with um, a political solution. Um, my role is to maintain a, a certain presence in the region to make sure that that presence is militarily capable and prepared. And I'm doing that. Um, I haven't been asked to, to provide any military options to do anything further in Syria. But we are spending a great deal of time and energy training our regional partners, uh, providing humanitarian assistance, uh, and in other ways, trying to mitigate the effects of it. But Uh, internal to the country, it's just simply a tragedy and one that's been precipitated by a regime that doesn't care for the majority of its population. المعارضة السورية تقول جنرال دمسي أن حلفاء الأسد روسيا، إيران، حزب الله وكل من وقف مع هذا النظام منذ بداية هذه الحرب يدعمونه بشكل ثابت غير متزعزع بالسلاح، بالقوات وكل هذه الأمور. في المقابل المعارضة تقول أن حلفائها لا يدعمونها بالشكل الكافي مترددون في دعمها وليست لديهم رؤية واضحة فيما يتعلق بكيفية مساعدة المعارضة في الحرب ماذا تقول لذلك؟ I, I was with you until you said why don't you give them the military aid there because you just you said the right thing the allies so why don't we give them assistance and we are giving them certain kinds of assistance non-lethal non-lethal assistance that's right but look part of the A responsibility also resides with the opposition itself. It hasn't pres presented a common face and a common purpose and a common set of leadership that has been able, that we've been able to um, to connect with. And so we, we're doing, you know, as much as we can given the constraints with which we're faced, and uh, trying to build that kind of consensus. We're being blocked in international bodies like the United Nations by Russia and others. And that's not helpful, and I, I actually can't understand why they're oblivious to the humanitarian crisis that they see unfolding. And, uh, and in the meantime, as you've said yourself, there is this emerging threat of extremism uh, filling some of the void. So it is a regional problem. It's an international problem. We're eager to be part of a solution. Um, but on the other hand, we've got to have willing partners uh, across not only the region, but internationally. Mm -hmm. جنرال دمسي أنت قلت في تصريحات لك مؤخرا في العاصمة واشنطن بأن الولايات المتحدة لا تفعل ما هو كافي لدعم المعارضة بحيث يتغير ميزان القوى في الميدان ما الذي قصدته من ذلك؟ Well in the first place as to whether we're all on the same sheet of music it's a very complex piece of music and so 
um, you know, well-meaning people can disagree about uh, what types of solutions might be most applicable to these situations. So we've had some, some very um, important um, discussions about how we can help resolve the situation in Syria. Um, to your point about uh, my comment that we're not helping the Syrian opposition, it's, it's because of my belief that it's not simply about giving them um, the tools of war to confront the regime and somehow tip the balance. It's also about preparing Syria for the day after that. That is to say, um, regionally, there ought to be greater interest paid, in my judgment, to preparing Syrians to control Syria after this terrible conflict uh, uh, changes its current face. And, and frankly, I don't see that effort occurring. And so we could be faced with a situation where we're in a frozen conflict um, for some period of time because we haven't, uh, we haven't taken on, and I say we, meaning regional partners and the international community, haven't taken on the task of helping the opposition become capable of governing in a post-war climate. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's an important piece of work. One of the lessons, by the way, that we've learned in other places uh, in our recent past. هناك حديث الآن عن أن الإدارة الأمريكية ربما تعيد النظر في المرحلة القادمة في سياستها تجاه سوريا خاصة ما يتعلق بالتسليح هناك حديث عن تقديم صواريخ مضادة للطائرات محمولة على الكتف صواريخ تو المضادة للدروع التي يقول البعض أنه بدأ تقديمها بالفعل للمعارضة هل هناك بالفعل عملية إعادة تقييم للسياسة الأمريكية على الأقل من الجانب العسكري؟ Well, because we have so many uh allies and partners in the region were constantly reevaluating uh, the situation, the way the threat changes, the way the political dynamic is changing. So I, I shouldn't surprise you to know that we're constantly reassessing um, what is occurring and how we may influence it. As for where that will take us, uh, I, I can't speak any further about that at this point, other than to say that it's a constant source of uh, interest and a constant um, source of concern of ours. I, of course, I think there's more that can, that can be done, but typically that conversation goes to a particular weapon system. You know, should we give them tow missiles? Should we give them anti-aircraft? The real issue for me is how do you prepare them? How do you do that, but also prepare them in the event they succeed? And I've said repeatedly that unless I, I can fully comprehend, if we can get a whole of, uh, you know, a, a regional effort to answer that question, what happens if the opposition succeeds or what happens if it does not? Mm -hmm. I think we'll be dealing with this tactically when what it really requires is a, is a bigger strategy, a longer term effort and a, effort and a regional approach. هل أنت قلق جنرال دمسي من وصول العناصر المتشددة الجهادية التي تقاتل في سوريا اليوم إلى السلطة في حال سقوط النظام في دمشق؟ I worry about everything to include that, but there's other you know, there's other scenarios that, that would be equally dangerous. That's the problem. There's, a, there's a, any number of scenarios, and we tend to focus on one. And uh, I think we can, we can be smarter than that as a, a group. فيما يتعلق بأفغانستان الرئيس أوباما بالأمس أعلن عن جدول زمني لسحب القوات الأمريكية سيبقى في أفغانستان أقل من عشرة ألاف جندي على مدى العامين القادمين البعض في واشنطن وخاصة في الكونغرس يقولون أنه لا يمكن سحب القوات الأمريكية بناء على جداول زمنية مصطنعة يجب أن تبقى حتى تكمل مهمتها ما رأيك في ذلك؟ Well, what I have to say is that the, um, based on what we've seen the Afghan security forces accomplish recently Big events, the Lo Aloya Jirga, they accomplished the protection of a, of a New Year's celebration. They've accomplished the protection of several religious holidays. They've accomplished the protection of their elections. Um, they've uh, been engaged in several very significant fights, both in the Northeast and in the South. And in, e in each case, they've performed very well. Mm -hmm. Tactically, they know how to fight. Uh, they, they truly do not any longer need our help on uh, the fundamentals of fighting. Where they do need our help, uh, and will for some period of time, is in building the systems around an armed force that will pay them, will feed them, will allow them to prepare a budget, to house them, to supply them. Mm -hmm. 
And those are kind of institutional level challenges that we can, uh, and we can provide assistance for that at smaller numbers than we currently have in Afghanistan. And by the way, the Afghan people themselves uh, are eager to begin to control their own destiny. And so what you've seen in the announcement is that the President of the United States made a decision that we would uh, remain engaged regionally. That's from the, from the capital, but as well across four of the regions. And we'll do that for a period of time to help provide some space so that the new Afghan government, as you know, brand new government, soon to be seated. It'll take some time for it to, let's say, get its legs under it. So we don't want to be conducting our transition at the same time they're conducting theirs. So we'll give, our, give them some space. Then we'll begin our transition and we'll begin to focus more at the institutional level over time. And frankly, I believe the Afghans will, um, will accomplish the task, given the kind of support, including financial support, some of which we will need the assistance of our Congress and, and other uh, donors from across the world to maintain that financial support. With that combination of, of smaller numbers of advisors, but the right advisors, not just any advisor, but specialists, and the continued financial support, I think, charts a path for success for Afghanistan in the future. لو انتقلنا للموضوع الليبي جنرال دمسي هناك اخبار اليوم عن ان الولايات المتحده بدات بتحريك بعض القطع الحربيه في المتوسط قباله السواحل الليبيه هناك مقاتله او سفينه قتاليه على متنها حوالي 1000 عنصر من عناصر المارينز هل هذه الخطوه هي مجرد خطوه احتياطيه ام ان هناك خطط بالفعل لتدخل عسكري مباشر في ليبيا؟ Well, your intelligence is quite good, actually, on the movement of my naval assets. Um, it certainly does not indicate any indication that we will take control of the situation. It's very much, it's very much our effort to position resources uh, for situations in which U.S. personnel or facilities could be put at risk and, and the requirement to have options to deal with that. And so we're moving assets around constantly. Uh, given the unrest in Libya, we thought it prudent to move something into the vicinity of Libya. Uh, but again, Libya, uh, Libya is actually a good example of what I described earlier of, uh, of a situation being resolved militarily, but not with the political um, foundation and with people prepared to actually form coalitions in order to stabilize the situation. And I think we're seeing it play out Uh, unfortunately and tragically, just a couple of years after Gaddafi fell. But no, the, the positioning of my resources is uh, essentially to give me options, not just in Libya, but elsewhere in the Middle East and North Africa. هل هناك خطط من أي نوع لتدخل عسكري في ليبيا سواء من قبل الولايات المتحدة أو من قبل الناتو في المرحلة القادمة بالنظر إلى الأوضاع؟ التي نشهدها اليوم في ليبيا وجود ميليشيات مسلحة بكثافة في كافة أنحاء البلاد. You know what I'd rather what I'd rather find a way to do is to and NATO is a, a good partner in this regard because many of the issues in the Middle East and North Africa end up migrating into Southern Europe. I'd like to find a way to partner with uh, with NATO and other partners in building some um, institutions inside of Libya that can. Stabilize the situation internally, rather than have to stand off and deal with it militarily. I mean, the truth is, the 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 future of these conflicts is only partially military, and maybe even the smallest part of the solution is military. The largest part is diplomatic, economic, and assistance to govern. And uh, we've got to get uh, better at doing that. Libya, كما تعلم جنرال دمسي تحت الفصل السابع للأمم المتحدة. وهذا بشكل من الأشكال يعني إمكانية التدخل العسكري المباشر هل ترى سيناريو معين يتم بموجبه التدخل من هذا النوع سواء من قبل الولايات المتحدة أو من قبل حلفاء الناتو أو استخدام ربما الطائرات بدون طيار لضرب أهداف معينة داخل الأراضي الليبية Now as I sit here with you Mohamed I, I don't see that possibility um, and uh, You know, I, I, the, the idea that uh, we would somehow seek to uh, take control of a situation that is chaotic and, and uh, indistinguishable, perhaps, to us um, is not something that I foresee. But we're, 
always eager for partners who can both help us understand it and help us craft solutions, whole of government solutions, uh, to resolve these issues. الجنرال مارتن ديمسي رئيس هيئة الأركان المشتركة للقوات المسلحة الأمريكية شكرا لك على هذه المقابلة هنا في أبو ظبي وشكرا على وقتك وإتاحة هذه الفرصة لسكاي نيوز عربية مشاهدينا إلى هنا نأتي إلى نهاية هذه المقابلة الخاصة مع الجنرال مارتن ديمسي رئيس هيئة الأركان المشتركة الأمريكية شكرا لمتابعتكم وإلى اللقاء